Now, let's welcome Dr. Gwyn Lim, who graduated from NUS with honours and masters in biology and getting a PhD in plant biology at Cornell University in US. She's sharing about one of the most successful groups of plants on earth, and that is daisy. There will be a live demonstration of the daisy dissections in the talk as well. Without further ado, I will pass the time to Dr. Wing. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me this uh, pretty damp uh, Saturday morning. Um, so I've decided that I would like to talk about daisies to everyone, and this is going to be an accessible daisy talk, so it's like botany for people who don't necessarily read textbooks. So you see a very beautiful picture of a series of daisies. And um, so I think we all know that daisies are like particularly lovely. They're one of the first plants children learn how to draw when they you know, start drawing flowers. You have a little circle and then you put petals around it. So this is, this is like the daisy. Um, so why did I choose to talk about daisies today. Well, actually, you know, um, Singaporeans, right, we like value for money. So daisies are extremely value for money because um, they're actually one of the largest plant families. Um, so it's between daisies and orchids. And so, you know, depending on who you ask and what time of day and how, who has recently done a revision, um, daisies are actually one of the largest. So anything, it's either, it's like slightly under 10% of um, all plants flowering plants are daisies. So um, botanists are very organized people. And so plant families, you know, daisy family, orchid family, grass family, they all have uh, specialized names for them. Uh, of course, we don't have to remember them, but uh, it's, I like to introduce them because, you know, it's, uh, it gives a little bit of linguistic nod to what kind of shape the flowers are. So daisies are in the Asteraceae. So ACA means, um, you see anything ending with ACA, that's a plant family, but it's Asteraceae. So some of you might know that daisy's other common name is asters. And what does aster mean? It is the same root as astronaut or asterisk, and that basically means star. So um, this refers to, the star refers to the, the shape of the daisy flower, like, you know, a little sunburst star shape. But um, daisies are actually one of the special families that were granted an exception. They were allowed more than one uh, family name. And that the other name is the Composite. Now, um, why are they called the Composite? We will find out later during the talk. They are found on almost all continents except Antarctica. So because, you know, you know, they're very successful. So there are more than approximately 32,000 species, lots and lots. Um, and so they're, they're found pretty much everywhere they can grow. The other habitat that they're not known to be found in is the marine habitat. So there are no oceanic or uh, uh, sort of marine daisies, but there are actually um, aquatic members of daisies that are found in freshwater. So they can be found, um, like, like I said, aquatic to all the way up to the mountains, and they have all sorts of forms. It's, uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty interesting. So they can be little herbs, they can be trees, shrubs, vines, all sorts of things. Um, let's see, why is it not moving? Okay, so the outline of my talk today um, is how to identify daisies, and the clue can be found in the picture uh, on, on, on this slide. Um, the second is, uh, you know, it's not so fun to just talk about stuff. So we want to like, you know, take apart a daisy. And I'll show you some recordings as well as a live dissection. Um, just fair warning for people who don't like bugs. Uh, there will be bonus insects. These are wildflowers and so they were harvested from the environment. They are weeds. Um, and so, you know, when they're weeds, they will be insect life with them. I will let you know. So for people who really can't take bugs, you can look away. Um, and then I'll talk about daisies in our lives. So a lot of us, you know, we know daisies in our lives, like the Jabera daisies, the sunflowers, beautiful things in our bouquets, but they're actually more common in our life than we think. And so I'll just let you know some examples of that. And at the end, I'll um, make time for questions that you might have on anything related to the talk or daisies in general, and I'll try to answer them. <clears throat> so how do you identify a daisy? Here you have um, a bouquet, right? So you know what the daisies are? 
daisies are the, the ones that look like a sunburst again, and they are the red ones. Um, so I have a quick question for everyone, uh, a poll. How many flowers are there in this vase? Can you, can you tell me how many flowers there are in this vase? And I mean, full disclosure, it is a trick question, so. Nice. I see everybody has all sorts of opinions. A lot of you are botanically informed. I'm just going to give everybody another five seconds. OK, um, I see it's stabilized. Almost half of you. Almost half of you. Um, know the correct answer, which is that there are actually more than a hundred flowers in this uh, in this vase. Now, how can that be? Okay, so I'll do the counting for you. There, there are 14 stalks that you can see, the flower stalks, but there are more than a hundred flowers. So how does the math work out, right? Well, let's uh, look into a flower and we'll see why that is. So, okay, just for everybody who's like, too far away from primary school biology, here's what a flower is. A flower actually has a very specific term. Um, it's a very specific term of a, of a series of parts in a plant. So I'm just going to give the quick and dirty um, sort of refresher on what a flower is. So you see here a very uh, stereotypical cartoon of a flower. Flower is composed of four um, sort of parts when you look at it uh, with your naked eye. First, you have the green stuff, the green leafy stuff. These are the sepals and they are the protective part. They protect the flower as it is emerging. Then you have the orange petals, very pretty. That's the beautiful part that attracts pollinators and humans alike. Um, and then you have these little uh, sort of ovals on a, on, a, on a thin hair. These are the stamens and these will produce the pollen and pollen are the male basically the male part. And then the central thing, you see this long chimney-like thing, that is the pistol. And the pistol, at the bottom of this pistol where there is a, where it connects to the sepal, that is where the ovules are, and that is the egg of the plant. So again, quick part, the protective green part, the pretty orange attractive yellow part, orange part, um, the boy parts, which are the oval yellows, and then the girl part, which is in the central stalk. Okay, so I'm gonna try to cut out as much specialist terms that you don't need to remember after this as possible. So if you look at the two flowers in the bouquet just now, there were tulips and there were daisies. Uh, and then you take them apart, just looking at them with your naked eye, you'll see that um, the, they, they both sort of look like the cartoon. So on the right, you have your tulip and tulips, um, the pur purple, the green protective part actually um, is the same color as the petals. So, you know, plants, they don't like to follow their textbooks. They haven't read the textbooks. They just do what they want. So, um, but the parts are still there, I assure you. So the, the petals are the sepals and the petals. So the green part and the attractive parts are both attractive in the tulip. And then the boy part is the purple uh, thing here. You see the stamens. And then the central chimney, okay, that's the girl part, the pistol. So a daisy sort of looks like the, the cartoon, right? It actually looks even more like the cartoon just now than, than the tulip. So you have the green part out here, which is the protective part, and then something like the white thing, which is the attractive part, and then the yellow, which looks like the boy part, and then the central like sort of spongy diamond thing that looks like the girl part. However, if you look at the daisy up close, um, each of these yellow blebs is actually itself a single flower. And um, the, the white parts that look like petals, they're actually a different kind of flower. So daisies are actually really tricksy. They have two different kinds of flowers squished together on one, uh, in one, one capitulum, what botanists call it capitulum, but on one sort of stalk. And um, it acts and looks like a single flower in other plants, but it's actually something like, uh, it can be hundreds of flowers. So like I've told you this and that sounds great or whatever, but what you want to see is um, 
more detail, right? So, okay, refresher. Huh? The central part, so that's number two, that's the disc florid. Um, so that is it's found in the central disc, right? So wait, I have a live demo here. So this is the this is the flower. You see the central disc here, the yellow bit? That is the disc, and this little bumps in it are actually each little flowers, the disc florid. Excuse the slightly ragged looking of this uh, condition of this flower, it was put in the fridge. And then the these each these each petal is actually a single flower and it's called the ray floret because it goes out like the rays of the sun. So two kinds of flowers. This floret, equivalent to the number two over there, which is the yellow bumps, and then the ray floret, which is like equivalent to the number three. And then you see something that's labeled with an F in this picture, right? And that is actually the fruit. So a lot of us will know a fruit that looks very much like this, and that is our sunflower seed. So when we say uh, you bought a packet of sunflower seeds to eat, what we actually mean is we bought a bunch of sunflower fruits and then we cracked the, sh the shell of the fruit, we ate the seed and then we spit out the shell. So that is uh, what we're talking about when we talk about sunflower fruits. So this is your stereotypical daisy, right? Like this is the classic most daisy of daisies. Now if we zoom in and we look at what a daisy is over here. Okay, there's some bugs. Excuse my buggy. Um, is the, we'll, we'll see this, the, the corner of the disc floret, and you'll see that there, some of them are open to the sides, right? So daisies um, actually mature from outside in. So the, the ones, the flowers on the outside will be open before the ones in the center of the disc will be open. And when they're open, there's all sorts of stuff that will come and visit them. And one of the most um, common ones that you'll see, especially amongst the weeds here, are thrips. Thrips are uh, just these teeny tiny bugs that eat pollen. At least in this case, they eat, do all sorts of things, but the, these thrips eat pollen. <clears throat> and thrips are fun because uh, one thrips is a thrips, and many thrips are thrips. So there's no such thing as a thrip. It's all thrips. And these thrips are very small. They eat pollen grain by grain, so that gives you an indication of how small they are. Um, and they're just crawling around this disc florets having the, having the time of their lives. So I've like explained it. So this is like in your brain, you're sort of confused what's happening. Like I know there are like many kinds of flowers and things. So now what we do is we're going to cut up some daisies so you can see for yourself what's inside there. And hopefully you can do this too uh, once you're done with this talk. So this um, was something that I started when I was in Circuit Breaker and I was bored at home. Um, it's literally like stuff that I have at home. I didn't have specialist equipment and you don't need specialist equipment. Um, it helps, it makes it easier, but you don't need it. So this is a $16 um, microscope that I bought from Lazada. And then this is a weed that I picked. And then I got like eyebrow tweezers, some like Play-Doh that my son doesn't want to play with anymore because he makes up with colors. And so you don't need like fancy equipment to really, you know, uh, enjoy the wonders of the natural world uh, uh, to look at it up close. So the two things that I'm going to take apart are Praxelis and the Singapore Daisy. And I'll tell you why uh, I chose these two weeds of all the weeds that are out there. So this is a Praxelis. Uh, pardon my not so awesome photo taking skills. Um, it is, it shows both the flowers and the, 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 the fruits, the cluster of fruits. So you see these brown puff balls? These are the fruits in front of you. And then behind you'll see um, these lavender things that look like pom-poms. Not the pink ones, there's a mimosa, the lavender ones. Um, and with the little like fluffy bits sticking out. So what are the fluffy bits? If you walk past it on this, uh, when you're going to work or if you're going somewhere, You'll just think, ah, oh, yeah, it's it's just some petals. It's not particularly exciting. It's you know, um, just a weed. But if you look at it under the microscope, it's really pretty. And so these are what the flowers and the fruits look like under the microscope. <clears throat> so in Praxalis, they only have disc florets, and the disc florets are the ones with the sort of uh, look symmetrical. They're all all round. And you'll see that they have five petals. And so if you look at the picture on the left, you'll see that it's really a beautiful little bouquet, right? All squished together with their little like V for victory girl parts. So another thing that you can uh, see in daisies a lot is that they have, um, you know, the, the chimney that sticks out in the, 
the, the, the pistil of the flower, the, the daisies do it like they have a fork. So it looks like a little victory sign or um, a little lizard tongue, very cute. And in Praxelis, the fluffy bits is actually the really long, sticky, outy uh, female part, um, just coming out right out above the petals. And then so on the right, you see the seeds, but like what is that fluffy stuff? What is that stuff that makes the parachute of the, of the fruit? Well, we'll take apart the daisy and then we can see what that is. So here is a short video of my, um, just me taking a, cutting a, a thing in half. You can see again, the tightly packed flowers, very beautiful under the microscope, does not look anything like that in life. Oops, is it paused? And then when you cut it apart, you'll actually see some hairs, kind of like some shiny long hairs. Uh, and they're all hidden when you, when, uh, unless you um, cut it apart, you will never see the little hairs. So, and then you see some brown stuff and that is actually the developing fruit. Remember what I said just now when um, I mentioned that a daisy matures, the flowers mature from the outside in. This also means that um, the flowers on the outside actually get pollinated and the fruit starts developing before the flowers on the inside mature. So here you see that the outside, outside closest to the, the, the sides of the, 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 the clump of flowers you'll see that these have like brownish, uh, blackish seeds. And then the ones in the middle are white because they're not even mature yet. Um, and then you see a mass of hairs, these hairs. Now, what are these hairs? Remember what I said uh, when I said just now that uh, in a flower, there is the green protective part. So plants, they like to modify their parts a lot. And, um, and in this one, the, the daisies, um, many of them have modified the sepals into these long hairs that when the seed matures and the flower drops off, these hairs remain. So here's one single flower. Um, to the left is the unfertilized of fruit or ovule. Um, and then here you have the flower. It hasn't opened up yet. You see all the petals are tightly closed. And around it is this crown of hair. It's very lovely, right? And these are actually the sepals. Remember the sepals of the flower? <clears throat> so the sepals do not fall off um, uh, when, the, when the fruit is mature. It actually expands outwards and makes this uh, parachute that catches the wind and disperses the fruit. <clears throat> Okay, the next one that I'm going to show is the Singapore daisy. And that's one that has uh, both ray and disc florets. So the, the pretty like, you know, petal-like flowers and then the, the central disc. So Singapore daisy is one of my favorite um, sort of local garden plants because it is um, something that is very common in Singapore. So you'll see it in landscaping used a lot. And it's, it's very cheerful, it has little yellow flowers, um, and then, you know, it like vines out. There's rarely any weeds, kind of like, you know, the grass sticking right out of it. It's very, you know, very neat, very, very tidy. So beneath this cheerful exterior of the Singapore daisy actually lurks a, a dangerous secret. Well, dangerous for plants, which is that the roots of the Singapore daisy uh, actually secrete a compound that is poisonous to other plants. And so other plants, when, they, when they, the seeds land in the soil where the Singapore daisy is growing, they actually get poisoned to death. And so any area taken up by Singapore daisies will stay Singapore daisies, which um, is pretty great when you want to maintain a nice clean garden, but it's not so awesome when they escape into land that you want to use for growing crops, for example. So here's the, the sort of a quick and dirty story on the Singapore daisy. Mm. So here's the video. Okay, for people who don't like bugs, uh, please turn away now. I will let you know when the bugs are over. Um, so here you have the, the Singapore daisy sort of up close. You see the wiggling body of one single thrips here covered in pollen. As I said, they eat pollen. So 
a lot of their, their lives, they're just kind of swimming in food, which is great. Um, and then you have the ray florets on the outside. So these are the ray flowers. And in a lot of daisies, the, the ray flowers uh, don't have male parts. They only have female parts. And you'll see this in a bit. And then the disc flowers have both male and female parts. And the male parts you can actually see because they're black, blackish. And so I'm going to pull out a single ray floret to show you that it doesn't have girl part, boy parts. Uh, and then you can watch the thrips run for their lives. So just there. And then you can see that sort of victory sign shaped uh, girl part in the daisy. So here's just a single thing. Uh, so sticking out towards uh, the left, top left, is the undeveloped fruit. And then the yellow petal, are the petals of the thing, they're all fused to one side. And then here you are, that's the, that's the little um, female um, uh, stigma. So the, the fort um, thing. And so if you, whoops. So if you, if the, once the, the, the fruit of the Singapore daisy is fertilized, um, they form something like this. Um, botanically, they're called akines, but don't remember this, don't worry about it. Um, and unlike the praxelis that you saw um, just now, the sepals are not modified to hairs. In fact, they fall off along with the flower. And that's, that forms the little ring-shaped scar that you see here on the fruit. And um, so daisies, they, since there are so many of them, a lot of them do very different things. And so this is what is, um, the Singapore daisy does. And another group that doesn't have the parachute type pappus um, uh, this dispersal method is sunflower seeds, right? So sunflower seeds, they just make that that fruit, and then um, it doesn't it doesn't get catch the wind or anything. It's actually dispersed by <laughs> humans or birds. So let's talk about the daisies around us again. Like I started working on this talk um, around circuit breaker time, so you can see a lot of circuit breaker influence in my um, presentation. I wanted to talk about a short like ode to the weeds of circuit breaker that are now um, not there or at least they've been chopped down so that you can't really see them as obviously. So here you are some of the most common um, weeds in my area. You have the coat buttons and I originally wanted to use coat buttons as uh, on the left as uh, something that is as part of my demo but they are so good at being dispersed. The, seed, the fruits are so good at being dispersed that there was I have tried and failed multiple times to bring home an intact head of seeds. So, you know, you know they just come off at, at just the slightest disturbance of wind. The Mindel, you have the Singapore daisy and the Praxelis on the right. And then um, the one that you see on the left here, very common, like the little, the little um, version. So these are Cyanthillium. I think it used to be Venonia. And then middle, you have Bidens. And I particularly like this picture because it's um, there's one of a, there's a picture of a hoverfly on it <clears throat> so a hoverfly on this Bidens is very cute because a hoverfly looks like a bee but it's a fly and a Bidens looks like a flower but it's actually many flowers so it's a bee that's not a bee and a, and on a flower that's not a flower but many flowers so you know nature does all sorts of stuff and then the right, I think like number one most popular plant for children um, blowing the, the parachutes, that's the Cupid shaving brush or um, Amelia, Sanchifolia. Daisies are also delicious and useful, even if you like don't pay attention to the, the weeds around you, um, you will see daisies actually a lot in your lives. Um, but you won't know them as daisies. And the number one thing that I enjoy telling people about daisies is that lettuce is a daisy. Lettuce is a member of the daisy family. Shock on everybody's like, what? Lettuce is a daisy. So um, I wanted to put many varieties of lettuce, but there were so many that I ran out of patience. So I just have one lettuce. But uh, rest assured, most of the, the there are many kinds, there are red kinds, um, frilly kinds. The yumak vegetable that you eat, it's also a kind of lettuce and it's in the daisy family. So 
Uh, you know, you see its lettuce, it's just, just a little head, right? How does it look anything like a daisy? Well, if you let a daisy go all the way to um, flower, you will see something that looks like this. Um, so you see something that looks like lettuce, lettuce leaves at the bottom, right? And then at the top, you see like an explosion of daisy flowers. So lettuce is actually in the daisy family. Uh, some other more common local uh, ulams and herbs include uh, ulam raja, so very pretty flowers um, in the daisy family, uh, magwert or ai tao, which is uh, very common in Eastern cuisine, Eastern Asian cuisine and um, uh, medicinal remedies that's here. I'll talk more about this genus later. Burdock, um, the root um, is called niu pian in Chinese and it's used in um, um, cuisines. Um, so there's also another cool fact about the burdock plant that you may not know. So um, everyone familiar with Velcro, right? Uh, Velcro is actually inspired from the burdock fruit. So in 1941, a Swiss engineer named George de Mestral was hunting with his dog in the Swiss Alps. And they, you know, walked past a bunch of burdock and the hooks, the burrs of the burdock, um, got stuck all over his dog's um, fur. And it wouldn't come off even after the dog was rolling around in the grass. And so he looked at that, he thought about it. He's like, hmm, maybe there's some sort of application for this. Looked into the, the structure of the burdock and tada, Velcro. So we have burdock to thank for the invention of Velcro. Um, and then, you know, pickles that you may have seen in the market, that's actually the stem. So we don't just eat, you know, we eat all parts of the thing, leaves, roots, stems of daisies. Some other more international um, edible daisies include artichokes, which are actually the unopened flower buds of a thistle. Um, so the plant itself is actually pretty intimidating. Uh, ondive, which is, um, I think, endive, ondive, which is the sort of tightly packed buds of a chicory. And then two sort of slightly not as common, but very interesting examples that I wanted to highlight today. On the left, you see something called uh, safflower. So most of us, I think, uh, in modern day times, know of safflower as like safflower seed oil. Uh, it's one of those like specialty oils we use for food. But safflower is actually an incredibly old crop that was recorded to have been cultivated during Mesopotamian times. Um, and the flowers are actually the source of a scarlet to yellow dye. And so that was very prized um, previously when there were no synthetic alternatives. And um, it's also used as a saffron substitute. So you can actually use the, the, the uh, processed flowers of the safflower plant as a saffron uh, alternative. And then on the right, I think everybody knows this, right? Sunflowers. Sunflowers are very, very common. They're very cheerful looking in bouquets. Um, we also know sunflowers uh, as a source of sunflower seed oil. But what is not as commonly known is that sunflowers are actually useful in uh, phytoremediation. And that is basically using plants to uh, clean up contaminated uh, areas. So soils that have been contaminated with uh, heavy metals such as lead and cadmium are, I mean, a waste because you can't uh, do anything on these soils. Like you can't grow anything. It's actually very uh, toxic for human beings. But sunflowers can tolerate very high levels of lead and cadmium. So if you plant a sunflower field on these contaminated soils, the sunflowers will actually absorb the lead and cadmium. And if you harvest the sunflowers, you can either burn it and use the ashes, uh, dispose of the ashes in a more safe way, or you can uh, actually try to extract the lead and cadmium from the sunflower plants. So, you know, pretty useful and like helpful for us. Uh, so three cheers for the sunflower. Uh, I don't have to, but I feel like I have to mention that daisies are uh, also incredibly lovely and have been cultivated to make all sorts of unusual shapes. So on the left, you have these, uh, <clears throat> the spider style of the Japanese chrysanthemum. And then you have dahlias on the right. <clears throat> but it's not just um, the flowers of the daisy that are beautiful. So some of them are actually cultivated for the unusual and, and adorable leaves. So um, you might know of the plant 
uh, as a house plant, the string of pearls. So these leaves are little uh, on the left here, like little ball shaped things, very cute. And when you squish them, they're very juicy inside. So they're succulent. Um, they are kind of daisy. And here you see one has gone into bloom and you've seen the classic daisy shape with the little fort um, style, uh, little fort female part on the, on the, on the plant. On the right, you have something called the string of dolphins because uh, the leaves, each leaf looks like a cute little dolphin jumping. Very adorable, very commonly grown at home. And then you have this creature, which is um, the a very beautiful um, member that's also grown as a house plant. So the leaves and the stems of this uh, plant, scientifically na named uh, Gynura orantiaca, is covered in these like electric purple hairs. Very, very sought after for its unusual um, morphology. Daisies are also useful, um, not just as sources of prettiness and food, but they're also important in, uh, for medicine and, and for agriculture. So on the left, you see a bunch of chemicals up top, uh, like, a, like chemical, uh, what do you call those things? Chemical draw illustrations. Um, so these are actually artemisinin um, derivatives. And what they are, are very important for uh, combating malaria. And they come from a plant called sweet wormwood or Artemisia annua, which have these uh, oils. When you crush them, you will smell that they're very aromatic. And these oils um, uh, also uh, will then have contained this, uh, this, these artemisinin compounds. So what um, is also not well known about these artemisinin things is that it was actually discovered by a woman named Tu Yo Yo, who did all her research in China. She won the 2015 Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology because artemisinin is uh, one of the key compounds we have to defeat malaria. And, um, and uh, she was actually the first Chinese person to get the, the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology and the first woman, Chinese woman to get it. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, you know, pretty impressive, I think, to me, that she discovered this compound in the 1970s. And on the right is um, a little bottle with the word pyrethrin on it. So pyrethrin is actually derived from a group of, uh, uh, I guess, daisies, chrysanthemums. And the knowledge of the use of pyrethrin as an insecticide was, uh, is very old. So from the Zhou Dynasty, there were um, records of it being used as a pesticide. In fact, during the Napoleonic Wars, French soldiers used to take these uh, daisy flowers and crush them on their uniforms to try to get rid of uh, body lice. And I like the bottle because um, it actually shows two rows of lettuce. So it's like using daisies to protect daisies. Pretty great. And pyrethrin is actually a very important compound for organic agriculture because it's naturally derived and it breaks down very quickly. So unlike many other pesticides that you might know that build up in the environment and cause all sorts of un unwanted effects on other animals and plants in the ecosystem, um, pyrethrins act very fast and break down in sunlight very quickly. <clears throat> So in summary, uh, daisies actually have composite flowers, which means that each uh, thing that unit that looks like a flower is actually composed of like one or two or uh, different kinds of flowers squished together in a bouquet that you can't see unless you look at it under a microscope. Um, the wind dispersed daisy fruits have a feathery parachute um, and the, that, that hairy stuff is actually made from the sepals. And daisies are everywhere around you if you look. Um, so food, uh, medicines, uh, chemicals, very, very, very useful plant. So thank you very much. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to take them. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. I see. Is a Singapore daisy endemic to Singapore? No, um, but it is very commonly used here, which is why uh, we call it the Singapore daisy because, you know, it's found, it's found everywhere here in, in gardens. Um, 
So someone mentioned, you can still see these daisies, the grass cutters haven't gotten them all. Yes, that is right. And that's why I love them because weeds are, they survive in spite of all odds, which is very inspirational to me. So um, what happens when the grass, cut, grass cutters get them is that, you know, they get very short and then it's, it's very hard to see them. Um, whereas during circuit breaker, when the grass cutters weren't um, sort of mowing down the, the, the gra grass verges into a neat row is that, um, they are they they get to like flourish and show you their 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 like like form uh instead of when they're they're being mowed down a lot but they're very good at dispersing so um as the minute they they get the chance to go to see they you know they disperse do their thing and then their their offspring can just kind of hang about and wait for the next chance to grow and disperse um, okay, Sarah, how old are daisies? I am not that sure how old they are. Um, the, 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 the daisy family, so I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, Alice, is it possible to grow daisies using hydroponics? Um, yeah, so I think hydroponic lettuce is a very common thing. Well, it depends on the kind of daisy. With 32,000 species, it's almost impossible to generalize. But um, daisy, there are daisy species that are definitely okay to grow on hydroponically lettuce. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, oh, oh. Um, so, so, uh, so, Singapore daisy roots exude poison to other plants. So how do you remove it from the ground upon clearing of the Singapore daisy? So um, once you, re uh, you remove the Singapore daisy, the, the compounds that are toxic to other plants will break down over time. So the, the problem is making sure that the Singapore daisy doesn't come back because they send runners. And so it's very easy to miss a single like vine that's just kind of hiding over there and they will just quickly take over all over again. So if you want to just maintain an area free of Singapore daisies, constant vigilance is the answer. Um, but that's a problem when it invades uh, sort of natural habitats because uh, you can't just go around and yank out Singapore daisies all day, right? So that's slightly more challenging. Okay. Uh, how many daisy species around the world? So daisies, because there are so many and they are really tough, um, you can ask daisy specialists. Unfortunately, I'm not a daisy oh. specialist, but there is so, <laughs> they are constantly revising oh, like what the species are. <laughs> And um, there are approximately 32,000 species at last count, 32,000, which is slightly un like it's under 10% of uh, all flowering plants. Uh, top questions. How easy is it to grow daisies at home? Um, so because there are so many kinds of daisies, there is probably a daisy for you. Uh, you th it depends on the, ha the habitat that you want. So some daisies prefer like intense full sun, like these marigolds. I didn't have a chance to use them, but here are examples of the, uh, float daisies with only ray florets. You see, they don't have these florets. Uh, these marigolds are particularly lovely. They're very good. I recommend if you plant tomatoes to plant uh, marigolds around them because uh, marigolds actually secrete a compound that will help protect uh, tomato plants from root pathogens. Um, but sorry, so marigolds enjoy full sun, so you can plant them with your tomatoes, but uh, there are other daisies that can tolerate more shade. So it depends on what you, what you, what you need for your, 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 your growing needs. Um, any specific type we should consider? Um, if you have light, I recommend the string of pearls because they're really, they're really adorable and the spring of dolphins or whatever, you know, those little succulents, very adorable. Uh, that's, why, that's why I mentioned Jainura as well, Jainura uh, orantiaca, the one with the electric purple hairs. Um, and it's like fuzzy, so you, you can like pet it, it's nice. Um, from the participant, oh, can all daisies be eaten? No, not all daisies can be eaten. Please do not. There are only some species of daisies that are edible. If you like there are poisonous daisy species, so do not randomly eat any daisy that you see. Um, lettuce is just like the edible daisy that people um, don't really know is a daisy. Are there any native representatives of Asteraceae in Singapore? Um, I believe there are, but um, I am not familiar with that. As I said, I'm not a daisy specialist. 
um, do you like daisies? Wow, I mean, <laughs> if I didn't, would I give a 40-minute talk where I just rambled on and on about how I like daisies? Um, are the smell of daisies very different or not? So that's a thing that I wanted to talk about that I didn't have a chance. So thank you, Muda. Uh, Win Winma, is that how I pronounce your name? So if you, if you look at like things like chrysanthemums and marigolds and you squish their leaves or the flowers, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of them actually have a really sharp smell. Uh, Ulam Raja or Wormwood or, you know, Aital. All of them have a lot of sharp smell. And this sort of uh, aromatic compound is actually very, very common in daisy family. And um, it's been used for perfumes, to flavor foods, uh, as medicines, as you know. And so that's something that... Um, as a pesticide. And so it's something that uh, I think it's, it's particularly lovely of the daisy family. And I think we have one participant here, L'Oreal. Want to, want to ask a question? Yes, no, go not ahead. Really. I'm just playing around with my phone. Oh. Uh, I don't know how to delete it. Sorry. It's a very interesting talk. Thank you. Oh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Sarah asked, what are some names of poisonous daisies? Um, well, I can only think of one that's very, it looks very much like the Praxelis um, that we saw just now, that's agaratum. Um, if you eat too much of that, it's, uh, it's really bad for your kidneys. So don't do that. Um, is dandelion a type of daisy? Yes, it is very much a daisy. So dandelions, I think, are what most people know of uh, as daisies because it's so popular in uh, sort of uh, popular. It's it's in popular culture as a you know the dandelion clocks, the flowers. It's actually one of the important um, older uh, botanical. Uh, edible plants and herbal remedies and that's why it's been it's so entrenched in sort of popular culture um, is mimosa a daisy mimosa is not a daisy it's a member of the bean family the legume family and it's also one of those special families that got an exception uh, in family names so the families that got and plant families that got exceptions are all very important to us um, culturally as well as botanically so uh, mimosas are in the legume family, the leguminosae or the fabaceae. So they got two different names. Uh, broccoli is in the brassicaceae, so it's actually not a daisy. It's um, it's a separate one with a lot, a lot, a lot of edible members. So um, that's also a very interesting family that I considered talking about before I decided on daisies. Um, so is what edible? Uh, the dandelions. Dandelions are edible, but you need to know how to identify a dandelion. Don't go eating esters until you are triple confirmed, sure, expert verified that it is, a, it is an edible member of anything. So um, dandelions are edible, but uh, make sure you really know that it's a dandelion before you eat it, because otherwise you might get very, very sick or even die. Um, dandelion roots actually were used to flavor ales. And dandelion petals can be used to make dandelion wine. Dandelion leaves are actually used as a, as a bitter green. So they, you can buy dandelion leaves um, for salad, um, but they are, they are kind of an acquired taste because they can be quite bitter. Um, any other questions? I think, I think, I think that's, that's it. I, did I miss anything? Oh, that's a very, very interesting uh, question that the participant actually asked. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you so much, Green. Yeah, um, hope you enjoyed the talk and also the questions that you have in your mind to Dr. Green. Right, do come back, join us, and next 11.25 a.m., we have Dr. Wan sharing about Fireflies, the untold story. You can join us back using the same Zoom link and password. See you back at 11.25 a.m. with Dr. Wan. Thank you, Gwen. Bye. Bye. See you Thank all later. You. Bye.